is clear that we can expect great things from you. Hello English learners and welcome to Film Story in Simple English where we retell the story of your favorite movies. It's almost Halloween and today let's take a look at Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, also called Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone in the US. Based on the famous books by J.K. Rowling, a British author, this is the first movie in a world famous series about a wizard boy named Harry. The movie's interesting characters and a deep history of the wizarding world have kept the movies an all-time favorite amongst its fans. Now, let's get into the story of the first film. The movie begins with Professor Dumbledore removing all the street lights with a magical device and talk to a normal looking cat which turns into Professor McGonagall. From their magic and pointy hats, we know they're wizards. Then, from the sky, Hagrid, a half-giant man, arrives on his flying motorbike to deliver them a baby. Professor McGonagall tells Dumbledore not to leave the baby to the family here because they are very bad. She calls them muggles or people without magic. But Dumbledore answers that they are the only family he's got and looks at the baby calling him Harry and showing us a scar shaped like a lightning bolt on his forehead. Many years later, Harry is now a boy and living with his uncle Vernon, Aunt Petunia, who make him work like a servant in the house and sleep in a small cupboard under the stairs. Harry's cousin, Dudley, is a spoiled kid who also likes to bully him. For Dudley's birthday that day, his mother and father are taking him along with Harry to the zoo. Before they go, Vernon tells Harry to do no funny business or he won't have anything to eat for a week. At the zoo, Harry discovers he can talk to a snake. He then falls to the ground when Dudley pushes him aside to look at it. Suddenly, the glass disappears and Dudley falls into the snake cage. Harry's aunt is so scared but his uncle catches him smiling. Back at home, despite not knowing what happened or guessing it was magic, he is pushed into the dark cupboard by his uncle who says, there's no such thing as magic. Some time later, Harry goes to collect the post when he sees a letter addressed to him, which his cousin takes away and gives his uncle Vernon. They're all surprised to see it was from a school called Hogwarts. Days later, many owls arrive and perch on their house to deliver the same letter to Harry, which his uncle tears apart. But then, the letter turns up everywhere, in front of the door and even in the eggs. After burning Harry's letters at the fireplace, his uncle comments that Sunday is the best because there's no post until the same letter, followed by thousands, come from the chimney, the door letter slot, finally making Vernon move his family to a faraway island in the middle of the sea. There, at night, Harry is seen drawing a birthday cake and making a wish on his 11th birthday when the door is slammed down showing Hagrid who is sorry about the door but angrily bends the rifle pointed at him by Vernon. He then mistakes Dudley for Harry until the real Harry shows himself. Hagrid then breaks the news which everybody knows, Harry is a wizard and gives him the letter inviting him to study at Hogwarts schools of witchcraft and wizardry. Harry's aunt and uncle refuse to let him go, of course, insulting his parents and Hogwarts headmaster, Albus Dumbledore, which makes Hagrid angry. Seeing Dudley greedily eats the cake he made for Harry, Hagrid uses his magic to give Dudley a pigtail, which freaks out his parents. Afterwards, he takes Harry to buy the wizard's most important equipment, a wand. On their way, they go into an inn where everyone is surprised or even shocked to see Harry, whose name is very famous in the wizarding world. There, he meets Professor Quirrell, a teacher at Hogwarts who will teach him defense against the dark arts. 
Looking quite nervous and wearing a turban on his head, the professor is too scared to shake Harry's hand. Coming to the other side of the inn, Hagrid and Harry arrive at Diagon Alley, where young witches and wizards come to buy all their school supplies. But first, Harry must withdraw money left to him by his late parents from the Green Gods Bank, which is entirely run by clever goblins. One of them asks Harry for the key to his vault and receives from Hagrid a top secret letter sent by Dumbledore about something very important. Harry gets his money and Hagrid the mysterious object, which he asks Harry not to tell anyone. Going into Ollivander's, the best place to get yourself a wand in Diagon Alley, Harry meets the shop owner, Ollivander, who gives Harry many wands to try, only to find out they are not for him. He thinks a while and chooses another wand. This time, the wand fills Harry with power and light, signaling that it chooses him. Ollivander says in surprise that Harry's wand has a brother, a wand whose core comes from one of the only two tail feathers of the same phoenix. That wand gave Harry his scar and belongs to he who must not be named an evil wizard. Outside, Hagrid calls for Harry and shows him his birthday gift, a white owl called Hedwig. At an inn, Harry asks Hagrid whether the wizard who gave him his scar killed his parents. Hagrid says yes and reveals the evil wizard's name is Voldemort. Voldemort, the most powerful dark wizard, killed anyone that fought against him, including Harry's parents, but he failed and disappeared when he tried to kill Harry. And that is why Harry is so famous. He is the boy who lived. At the train station, Hagrid leaves Harry to deliver the very important secret object to Professor Dumbledore and tells him to go to platform 9 and 3 quarters. There, he meets the Weasley, including Ron. On the train, the two of them get along very quickly, and Ron is surprised to know his new friend is Harry Potter. Just about to show off his magic with Harry, Ron is asked by a girl about a pet toad belonging to a boy called Neville. The girl stays to watch Ron does his magic, which fails, and show real magic by repairing Harry's eyeglasses. Upon learning she's speaking to Harry Potter, she introduces herself to the boys as Hermione Granger. Arriving at Hogwarts, the students are greeted by Hagrid, who takes them on boats to the magnificent Hogwarts castle. There, they are first met by Professor McGonagall, who says each of them will be sorted into one of four houses of Hogwarts, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. Students will get bonus or minus house points by their actions. The house with the most points wins the house cup at the end of the year. While waiting, he meets Draco Malfoy, who insults Ron Weasley for having ginger hair and being poor. Draco then offers to be Harry's friend and is rejected by Harry. In the hall, just before the sorting ceremony, the headmaster, Professor Dumbledore, quickly announces that no one could enter the Forbidden Forest or the third corridor on the right. Harry's scar hurts and he looks up to see next to Professor Quirrell, the potions teacher, Professor Snape, looking at him. Professor McGonagall then puts the sorting hat on each student, who is then sorted into a house suitable for them. Hermione and Ron are sorted into Gryffindor, Draco, Slytherin, and Harry, although advised by the hat to join Slytherin, doesn't want to and gets sorted into Gryffindor. Hogwarts has many wonders, ghosts, talking paintings, a winding staircase to their house dormitory. That night, Harry doesn't sleep and stares out the window with his owl, Hedwig. In the morning, Harry and Ron arrive late at Professor McGonagall's class. A cat which has been watching them transform into the professor who threatens to change one of them into a watch or a map so that they won't be late again. In the potions class by Professor Snape, it's clear that the professor doesn't like Harry when he asks questions Harry doesn't know the answers to and subtracts 5 points from Gryffindor. Draco, in the meantime, is very happy to see Harry suffer. 
At lunch, Owls deliver posts to the students, borrowing a newspaper from Ron. Harry learns that someone broke into Gringotts Banks on the same day Hagrid took the mysterious object away. Later, Madame Hooch teaches them flying on the magic broomstick. Saying up to have the broom fly up to their hand, they all prepare to mount the broom and fly. But Neville Longbottom can't control his broom and so breaks his wrist from falling. Draco picks up and plans to hide Neville's rememberal, a ball that turns red when the owner forgets something. Harry wants Draco to give it back. Climbing on his broomstick, Draco flies up and taunts Harry, who flies up after him. Draco throws away the ball, making Harry fly fast to catch it. From her window, Professor McGonagall sees Harry coming down. Harry is then cheered by his classmates when Professor McGonagall tells Harry to follow her. She introduces Harry to Oliver Wood, captain of the Gryffindor Quidditch team, and says she's found him a new seeker. As the youngest member in Quidditch in a century, Harry is then nervous he'll make a fool of himself when Hermione shows within the display case the gold badge of James Potter, his father, as a seeker. While Harry, Ron and Hermione are climbing the stairs, a section moves, leading them to the forbidden dark room. The caretaker's August Filch cat sees them and they run to hide. Coming to a locked door, Hermione unlocks it with a spell. Seeing no one, the caretaker goes away. The group finds themselves looking at a gigantic three-headed dog which attacks them. Screaming, they run out the door and lock the dog behind it. Ron is angry the school keeps such a creature while Hermione says the dog was guarding a trapdoor. In the morning, Harry is taught how to play Quidditch by Oliver. In short, Harry's job is to catch the golden snitch, which is super fast and near impossible to see, but catching it will win the game for the team. Back to class, where they study levitation with Professor Flitwick. To cast a spell, they must swish and flick their wand and say, Wingardium Leviosa. Hermione corrects Ron and easily casts the spell, lifting up the feather. Ron is clearly upset, and nearby, a student blows up his feather. Outside, Hermione walks away when she overhears Ron saying she's unlikable and has no friends. That evening, Hermione is not at dinner and is said to have been crying all afternoon in a girl's bathroom. Suddenly, Professor Quirrell runs into the hall, warning everyone about a troll in a dungeon and faints, falling to the ground. The students panic! Headmaster Dumbledore then tells them to be quiet and gets back to their dormitories while the teachers go deal with the troll. Harry and Ron realize that Hermione doesn't know and runs to help her. The two see the troll walking into the girl's bathroom. Hermione, after a long time crying, walks out only to find a big ugly troll looking at her. The troll attacks her but is distracted by the boys throwing pieces of wood at him. Harry jumps on the troll's head and stick his wand up his nose, stopping him from hurting Hermione. But the troll catches Harry and is about to beat Harry with his club. To save Harry, Ron tries successfully to catch the levitation spell on the club, which then falls on the troll's head, knocking it out. The professors come. Just after that, Hermione says it was her fault because she thought she could take on the troll alone and thanks Harry and Ron for saving her. Harry notices Snape's left foot is bleeding. Subtracting 5 points from Gryffindor, McGonagall awards 5 points to Ron and Harry each for sheer dumb luck. On their way back to the dormitory, Ron cheers up Hermione, saying they're her friends. The next day, Professor Snape talks to Harry, saying his Quidditch match will be against Slytherin, his house, and walks away with his left foot clearly hurting. Harry tells his friends that maybe Snape let the troll in to distract everyone and steal the secret object. He was then hurt by the three-headed dog. From above, an owl delivers Harry the latest magic broomstick, the Nimbus 2000 which was given to him by Professor McGonagall. It's time for the first Quidditch game of the season between House Gryffindor and Slytherin. Gryffindors play very well, but the Slytherin team uses violence to try and win the game. Upset because he cannot help his team, Harry then spots the golden snitch and flies after it, but his broomstick suddenly flies out of control in the air. 
Hermione spots Snape's muttering a curse to mess with Harry's broom. From under his stand, Hermione casts a fire spell and distracts Snape. Harry takes control of his broom again and goes after the snitch. Standing on his broom, he is knocked forward, but he catches the snitch with his mouth, winning the match for Gryffindor. Harry, Ron and Hermione talk to Hagrid about Snape's trying to curse Harry's broom and previously trying to get past the three-headed dog, which Hagrid calls Fluffy, and put there to guard the secret object. He then realizes he said too much and tells the three to stop meddling in this problem because it's dangerous and a secret known only between Dumbledore and Nicholas Flamel. Realizing he's done it again, Hagrid quickly goes away. It's Christmas at Hogwarts. Harry and Ron are playing wizard chess when Hermione comes telling them to look for books about Nicholas Flamel in the restricted section. The next morning, Harry finds out he has a present which was borrowed from Harry's father and is now returned to Harry from a mysterious sender. It was an invisibility cloak. Using the cloak to sneak into the restricted section for information on Nicholas Flamel, Harry opens a book which screams, alerting the caretaker and making Harry drop his lamp. Putting on his cloak, Harry runs away and sees Snape threatening Quirrell. Shortly after, Harry discovers a magical mirror which shows him his late parents. Dumbledore finds Harry staring at the mirror and says it is the mirror of Erised, which shows a person what he wants most, and many people have wasted their lives looking at the mirror for too long. He says the mirror will be moved away and advises Harry against looking for it again. When the holiday is over and with Hermione's help, Harry learns that Nicholas Flamel is the maker of the Philosopher's Stone, which is needed to make the elixir of life with the power to help the drinker live forever. The three concludes that Snape is trying to get past the dog to take the stone. That very night, they tell Hagrid about Snape and find out there are other protections for the stone. There, they see a dragon hatch from an egg. Hagrid names him Norbert, but the three are seen by Draco from outside the window. On their way back, the three are given detention for going at night by Professor McGonagall, who is told by Draco, but gives him the same punishment. All four of them have to go with Hagrid in the Forbidden Forest. In the forest, as everyone splits up to find a wounded unicorn, Harry and Draco see a hooded figure drinking the unicorn's blood for its healing properties. While Draco runs away, the figure then tries to attack Harry, but is scared off by a centaur named Firenze, a friend of Hagrid's. Harry guesses that the hooded figure was a weakened Voldemort and that Snape is trying to get a stone to make Voldemort strong and living again. After hearing from Hagrid that the three-headed dog will fall asleep if he listened to music and that he told this to a man in a pub, Harry, Ron and Hermione guessed that Snape was the man in the pub and tried to warn Dumbledore. Upon hearing that Dumbledore is away, the three guess that Snape will try to steal the stone that night and try to find the stone before Snape does. The three, after being stopped by Neville and petrifying him, find Fluffy sleeping to a bewitched harp. They quickly jump down the trapdoor when the harp stops playing and wakes up the dog. After that, they face a number of challenges. Hermione uses her knowledge of spells to get past the plan, Devil's Snare. Harry uses his skill as a seeker to get past the countless flying keys and catch the one that unlocks the door. And Ron uses his skill at chess to win a violent life-side chess match with themselves as chess pieces. However, Ron is nearly killed in a chess match and Hermione stays with him as Harry goes on ahead alone. In the final room, Harry finds out that it was not Snape who wanted the stone, but the defense against the dark arts teacher, Professor Quirrell, looking into the mirror of Erised. Quirrell says that he let the troll in, try to kill Harry in a Quidditch match, and that Snape has been protecting Harry all along while trying to stop Quirrell. Then, Professor Quirrell makes Harry look into the mirror of Erised. Due to the spell put there by Dumbledore, the mirror only gives the stone to the person who wants the stone but not to use it. That's why Quirrell cannot get it from the mirror. 
Harry finds the stone in his pocket after looking in the mirror and after learning Harry lied to him about what he had seen in the mirror, Quirrell takes off his turban and reveals a weakened Voldemort living on the back of his head. Harry tries to run away but Quirrell starts a fire by clicking his finger to prevent his escape. Voldemort tries to convince Harry to give him the stone by promising to bring his parents back but Harry refuses. Quirrell then tries to kill him but finds out his hands burn when he touches Harry. Harry then uses this power to fight and causes Quirrell to turn into dust and die. When Harry gets up, Voldemort's spirit rises up and flies through Harry, knocking him out. Harry wakes up at a school hospital wing. Professor Dumbledore explains that a stone has been destroyed and that Hermione and Ron are safe. Quirrell burned at Harry's touch because when Harry's mother died to save him, her death gave Harry a protection made of love, which can harm Voldemort. During the end of year feast, Gryffindor has 312 house points, Hufflepuff 352, Ravenclaw 426, and Slytherin 472. The Gryffindors may be the worst house this year, but then Dumbledore announces that extra points will be given to the students who have done great things. First, 50 points to Hermione for her intellect while others were in danger. 50 points to Ron for the best played game of chess that Hawkswood had seen for many years. 60 points to Harry for courage. And 10 points to Neville for the bravery of standing up to his friends. These last-minute points wins Gryffindor the House Cup, and all the Gryffindor celebrate their victory. Before Harry and the rest of the students leave for the summer, Harry realizes that while every other student is going home, Hogwarts is truly his home. That's the end of film story in simple English for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I'm Kieran Wynn, thank you for watching and see you next time.